um, conference is uh, the third in a row organized by um, ALDE Group with the policy makers and the stakeholders and is anticipating the publication by the Commission next week of the new proposals for 10E and 10T financing and uh, the new uh, multi-annual financial framework connecting Europe facility. I'm very happy that uh, our, our group uh, today is, is hosting uh, this uh, important uh, conference um, because I think it's more maybe one of the most pertinent questions uh, that we can uh, put today on the table, how uh, we can uh, finance in Europe uh, major uh, works of infrastructure. Um, you could also uh, put the question in another way. Can we afford not to do so? We have to have an integrated, all-encompassing na uh, transport network that needs to work properly. So we need security when it comes to planning. We need long-term strategies for energy to ensure that more money is investment invested in energy in order to ensure modern production capacities that are low in CO2 emission, as well as ensuring that the production capacity is translated across to transport capacity, and that all translates into energy efficiency. And when it comes to the investment in infrastructures, I think there are very few other examples that can uh, represent uh, better than the uh, investment in infrastructures, uh, economic operations that generate multiple advantages for the member states concerned as well as for the European Union. Because appropriate infrastructures uh, for, for energy, for transport, for uh, uh, ICT and, 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 and the digital uh, really uh, allow uh, the European Union to be more competitive. Considering the growth uh, forecast in traffic between member states, which is expected to double by 2020, the investment required to complete and modernize a true trans-European network in the enlarged EU amounts to roughly 500 billion between 2007 and uh, 2020. In the field of telecommunication, um, there the uh, Europe 2020 strategy has underlined the importance of broadband deployment to promote, promote social inclusion and competitiveness. First of all, it's a, a question of finance and not vision. The vision is there and the vision is very compelling and very inspiring in terms of what, what we want to do across infrastructure in Europe, but the money isn't there. So we have to get the finance side of it right. Um, the second takeout I'd like you to take is that it's a question not of the public purse. The public purse will not be able to afford what we're trying to do on infrastructure. It's all about the framework you create and the policy and the regulatory environment. And things like we've just heard are very helpful, um, but they're helpful as part of a wider environment and framework that needs creating. Often, the way the users pay is through tariffs that are indexed to some sort of consumer uh, price index, some sort of inflation index, and that's done to allocate the cost of the infrastructure fairly across different successive generation of customers, of users. Uh, this also means, from an investor perspective, that these kind of models can provide inflation protection over a long period of time. We have 29 legislative measures on financial uh, services. How, how, how do these proposals fit in with those? Um, can you tell us vis-a-vis -vis the ones we've already got, like Solvency II, uh, where we're going vis-a-vis -vis them with, with capital requirements? Uh, and and, and uh, obviously we're coming along and we'll be redoing uh, the pensions funds and, and, and lots of other things. To finance infrastructure, you first and foremost need a good project pipeline. If you have a good project pipeline, and that's the experience I think in, uh, as the minister just, just explained, if you have a good project pipeline, you have funding, 
And in many cases, when the project is well structured, in particular as most member states are now beginning to develop uh, revenue schemes for, for all types of, of modes of transport, in that case you can find financing, funding and financing. More than 400 billion euro have already been invested in the TENT network. One third of this amount comes from the EU funds. We can say uh, very serious that without this money, some of these projects um, will be still in, uh, on the shelves and wait for uh, the chance. The main part of the EU support for the effective development of the TENT network has been implemented through the cohesion policy. And we see how it works and uh, in our opinion it works very good.